Hi guys, it's your boy Awam Kenneth and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Awam Kenneth and if this is your first time here, you have to subscribe, subscribe, like the video before watching it, you know, hit the like button so my video gets recommended more. So today's video is going to be a book review. I'm coming up with new content now due to the fact that it's been a pandemic and I changed locations and I sort of liked my white background that I have in my previous videos. And I don't really like this background, to be honest. So I have been a little bit hesitant when it comes to doing videos here. So yeah, I have cancelled my Netflix plan once more in an attempt to be more productive this period. And let's see how far that goes. Will I be able to last till the end of August without resorting? Okay, so this video or this topic or this book that we're reviewing today has a lot to do with like me cancelling my Netflix subscription. So the book is called The Subtle Art of Not Giving a F. Uh, am I allowed to say that on YouTube? So yeah, it's by Mac Manson. <coughs> Mac Manson. And to be honest, I don't really know what it's about. I just wanted to read the book because a lot of people are reading the book. And again, I like reading books. So why not read this book, right? And it's, I don't know if you can call it self-help or anti-self-help or a self-help self book of a higher ladder. Because <laughs> it's so much complex to me and I do not care or I'm not bothered, right? Or I don't give a dash about my review of this book because i feel for me to get the information i need to understand this book i have to read like let's say three times at least to really get the information because there were a lot of topics there were a lot of ideologies and logic being discussed in this book for example now not, he was saying that not given a dash is not the same as being indifferent and i just like to like read that part because it really meant something to me because i was resent resenting someone who said that they were indifferent and i like how this book just like explained that so the subtle out of not giving a dash the explained the bio so subtly one not giving a dash does not mean being indifferent. It means being comfortable with being different. Let's be clear. There's absolutely nothing admirable or confident about indifference. People who are indifferent are lame and scared. They are couch potatoes and internet trolls. In fact, indifferent people often attempt to be indifferent because in, a, in reality, they give way too much dash. They give a dash about ev about what everyone thinks about what every yeah, what everyone thinks. I don't know why I this, yeah, they give a dash about what everyone thinks of their hair, so they never bother washing or combing it. They give a dash about what everyone thinks of their ideas, so they hide behind sarcasm and self righteous snack. They are afraid to let anyone get close to them, so they imagine themselves as some special, unique slow, snowflake who has problems that nobody else would ever understand. I would go on and on, like reading more, but I feel like that would be boring for people watching YouTube. So, yeah. So, just that alone tells you something about the book. So, this small part about um, the difference between not giving a dash and being indifferent just explains one concept that was being discussed in this book because he looked at um, happiness he talked about self-awareness he talked about people trying to be different and even the fact that everyone says that um you have to be different right and he also claimed or ninja the fact that even opera opera says it all the time so if you're not going to be extraordinary, if you're not going to be special, then why try? If you're not going to be the next Kylie Jenner, right? Then what is your purpose on this 
Earth, right? He also meant, talked about the like, ideas of how people neglect like the smaller things of life and try to pursue things that are way, way, way beyond them. And I love the fact how he also used his life as like a base point for examples and not just stating examples from somewhere else. So he made mention of the fact that he traveled for a very long time and when it was all said and done, right, he felt much more comfortable having focus in one location and being extremely focused at one thing, like having just one thing, like basically having one option or having fewer options makes you more focused. Because by the time you have been to 20 different countries and have more than 20 different friends in each of these countries, it becomes hard for you to really settle in one because if you settle in one, you're giving away opportunities and friendships and relationships in the other 19, right? So it gives you, it, cre it creates a problem sort of in the sense that you are almost unable to decide, right? On what to do at the end of the day. So that's options for you. To be honest with you, the best part about this book was the ending and I just love, I don't know if it's savagery, but I just sort of imply savagery on it. So the chapter, the chapter nine, which is like the last chapter, goes dot 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 and then you die right like that's that's what confuses me about the entire book because i read this within the space of like two months or two months plus because i will read drop read drop in between and i think i enjoy the book better that way so if i wanted to read it again i have to like read it at one sitting so that it gets much more it brings out much more meaning to me at the same time so what I like about the self-awareness onion that was made mention in this book is this. I'm just going to read out like a small excerpt. Self-awareness is like an onion. There are multiple layers to it. And the more you peel them back, the more likely you're going to start crying at inappropriate times. Let's say the first layer of self-awareness onion is a simple understanding of one's emotion. This is when I feel happy. This makes me feel sad. This gives me hope. Unfortunately, there are many people who suck at even the most basic level of self-awareness. I know because I am one of them. My wife and I sometimes have a phone back and forth that goes something like, ha, what's wrong? Me. Nothing is wrong. Nothing at all. Ha, no. Something is wrong. Tell me. Me. I'm fine. Really. Ha, are you sure? You look upset me with nervous laughter really no i'm okay seriously 30 minutes later <laughs> me and that's why i'm so ah, da, 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 pissed off he acts just like as if i don't exist half the time so basically like the blowout happens 30 minutes later so and he also talks about how people do not have conversations like this and basically not aware of themselves in conclusion, this book is simply a very complex book that I feel like people need to read and talk about together, then read again, and explore conversations after having a second read of the book and much more value and knowledge will be discussed and discovered. Um, so that is my take on The Subtle Act of Not Giving a Dash by Mark Manson. Sorry, anytime you hear dash or jiggy jiggy jigga in this video, just know that I'm talking about the word that starts with F and ends with K. Um, yeah, I don't know. YouTube has a policy about swear words. So yes, um, right now I'm reading this. Um, what is this again? Dear Ejoali, or a feminist manifesto in 15 suggestions. And we should all be feminist by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. Both books are by the author. So these two books will complete my reading of everything Chimamanda has ever written and published in book form. Right? I've read some articles in New York Times. So yeah. But I have six published materials. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, this is my take on the subtle art or if not given a dash. I know it's quite complex and not really free-flowing, 
but I like that. I feel like it's something I can work on. So, and I'm confident in being different. <laughs> so yeah, see you guys in my next one. Stay safe.